It's a 45-minute drive to the Columbia Hospital. A Scientology doctor works there in the emergency ward. They had called him earlier, and he said, bring her up here. And he said, yes, bring her up here. Was Lisa already dead upon arrival in the hospital? According to the Scientology doctor from the hospital, Lisa died in the emergency ward from the effects of a bacterial infection. Is the report manipulated? In any case, it carries a false date of birth. Furthermore, the pathologist that performed the post-mortem on Lisa's body after her death found no sign of an infection. More likely, the Scientologist died of severe dehydration. At this moment, Scientology has taken a case to the Clearwater Court to stop the publishing of the test results of the post-mortem. The case stirs quite a bit of dust. Did Lisa McPherson die while she was locked up in Fort Harrison and was barred from much-needed medical assistance? Exactly this question is under scrutiny by Sergeant Wayne Andrews, who leads the police investigation in the McPherson case. He doesn't want to give an interview. However, he does give us permission to investigate other cases. We stumbled into a series of rare death cases that occurred during the last 20 years among the guests at the Fort Harrison. Among those were German Scientologists as well. South of Clearwater. On this location on November 2nd in 1985, Sergeant Tida discovered the body of a man in the water. This turned out to be 38-year-old German Andreas O, chief of the Scientology mission of Stuttgart, Germany. By then he had lived in Florida for several months. Scientology was dissatisfied with him and his turnover and prescribed special courses to him. Although swimming was prohibited and there was an emerging gale, the German went into the water two days before. He believed, as we found out later, that he, as a Scientologist, had supernatural abilities. According to the police files, Scientologists reported the German missing before the body was found and gave a false name. To deceive the police, Tida thinks this is a bit strange. It looks like it's a little bit uh, suspicious. And there are yet more deaths among the guests of the Scientology Hotel at Fort Harrison, some of which have never been solved. 1980, suicide. The woman suffered from depressions, but wasn't allowed to take medication. 1980, mysterious death in the bathroom in boiling hot water, probably drowned. 1988, death by drowning, circumstances unknown, accident, murder, or suicide. 1989, dead in the basement next to the heating boilers, carbon monoxide poisoning. 1988, death in room 758. The victim is a 31-year-old German. According to the records, Herbert P. died August 28, 1988, during the night from a heavy epileptic attack. He hit his head on the night table. Until early 1988, he had been treated by Dr. Klaus Balin, who was a Scientologist, coincidentally, at the same time, in the Fort Harrison Hotel. The hotel has a swimming pool available behind it, where one can relax between the expensive courses. Harabit P., son of a wealthy building contractor, apparently enjoyed his life in the Scientology refuge until his death. Back in Germany, on the Bodensee, this is where the German lived. We want to look into the case because the police records have made us curious. The Scientology doctor reports that he prescribed vitamins for his patient despite regular attacks instead of treating him with proper medication. Such medication was indeed not detected in his blood during the post-mortem examination. The Scientologist had promised her son a cure for his disease without medication, says his mother, with expensive courses in Florida. Herbert was treated by the then Scientology doctor directly after his honeymoon on recommendation of his wife. The mother is angry even today. For this organization, a human life doesn't mean a thing. 
One can't promise someone lightheartedly something that can't be realized. Does she believe the death of her son, Harabit, could have been prevented if he would have kept taking his regular medication? Without a doubt. His mother believes Harabit wanted to spend large amounts on Scientology. It was only after his death that we learned he had called the bank from Florida and asked for a credit of one half million dollars, giving as a reason that he wanted to buy real estate. In Florida? In Florida. What do you believe the money was really meant for? It would only have benefited Scientology. Munchen. We would like to speak with Dr. Klaus Ballen. How could he explain withholding medication from his epilepsy patient? Ballen doesn't want to be filmed. He prefers to react in writing. In those days, he considered vitamins and Scientology concentration training as an alternative cure. Although he has left the organization in the meantime, he denies any responsibility for the death of the epilepsy patient. We show the documents about this case to Professor Gunter Schwenderman. He leads the neurology ward in the hospital Bremen Ost. Vitamins, says Schwenderman, are completely without benefit for epilepsy patients. Ordinarily, in the treatment of epilepsy, you would not withhold medication from a patient who has attacks every night. Instead, you would determine what medication is most effective for him. And I'll say it again, vitamins and minerals have no effect on epilepsy. I can tell you with the utmost probability that with adequate treatment, the patient would still be alive.